Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about the cost to live in the UK. And this is specifically for anyone interested, but also for my fellow travellers that are wanting to come and spend some time in the UK to get an idea of what it may cost you. I'll be back in a minute. So welcome back to my channel. My name is Zoe. I'm in the process of setting up all my belongings in my house to go full time travelling. Now I watch a lot of YouTube channels um, to get inspiration of places to go and how much it might cost me. And I thought I would repay the favour to all of my fellow YouTubers who have given me breakdowns of costs for lots of places throughout the world to tell you what it cost me to live in the UK. And what I've done is I've added up my costs for the past month um, and I'm going to share them with you. So if you want to come here, you can see how much it may cost. I will make a caveat here is that I have in the last 12 months really been cutting back on my spending. So I am living on a budget here. And um, I'm doing that because I'm going full time traveling. I'm trying to train myself to be good and not spend money that I don't need to spend. And uh, so I've done it on that basis, um, but I will talk through it. Now I'm going to give the costs in uh, UK sterling, but I will put on the screen what it is in dollars. So let's start. So I live in a three bedroom house in Stratford upon Avon. Um, and uh, actually the house two doors down from me is, is the same house and it's rented. So I'm going to use that cost and that's a thousand pounds a month rental for a home like this. This is about five minutes walk from the town centre of Stratford-upon-Avon and two minutes walk from the river. So it's a very good location. You can pay a lot more in this area and if you go to London you'll be paying a heck of a lot more. So I don't think the, that rent is unreasonable um, but I do know like on Airbnb it can be a lot more. Uh, so, you know, you want to be thinking you're on a six month to 12 month uh, lease to get that kind of rent. So on top of that, you have to pay council tax and on this property, that's £149 a month. Electricity and gas, which is combined for me. Um, I go through one company for both and I pay 141 a month. That went up a lot since two years ago and everyone I think knows is, is in the same boat there. Um, all went up and uh, keep telling us it's coming down. Well, I'm not seeing that. I don't know if anyone else is, but I'm not. Uh, home insurance, so that's for uh, contents and for building insurance is £50 a month. Um, now, another thing you, in the UK it, that they try and make you pay for is your TV licence. So this is from the BBC and that's £169.50 a year. Now, if you're uh, renting through Airbnb, you would assume they have the licence and you wouldn't need to worry about that. But if you're uh, long term renting or you own a home here, you're supposed to have this TV licence. Now, I'm not including it in my cost because I don't have one because I do not watch BBC and I don't watch live TV. And, and I'm hardly here, uh, you know, I still travel a lot even though I've not left for full-time traveling. So um, I actually don't watch any of those. I just watch Netflix and Prime TV and uh, DVDs. So I don't need one and I don't pay it. Um, and yes, they chase me a lot, but I'm still not paying it. I don't use it. Cars, now cars are, uh, the thing is, in the UK, public transport is very expensive. I think it's very expensive. Um, you know, the trains, the buses, uh, even taxis, uh, you know, compared to other places, it's just, it's just mad. Um, so, you, you know, you need a car. But I don't, I have a car. Um, now, I brought the car, uh, I think I had it six years now, so I don't pay any lease on it. So if you have a lease or you're hiring a car, you need to add those costs to to your budget um, and I only drive about 180 miles a month on a, on a normal month because I, I, just, I, you know, I just potter around Stratford-upon-Avon and most of the time I walk. 
So last month I did 180 miles, so I've, I based it on that, and that cost me in fuel 55 pounds. That's another thing that shot up. Um, but if I'm like, for example, going up north to see my family, then that's going to be double that, just more than double that. It, it depends where you're going, but that gives you an idea. On 180 miles, it cost me 55 pounds. I also have to pay tax, which is 32 pound a month for my road tax and insurance, which is £26 a month. I don't really understand why my car tax costs more than my insurance, but it does. Um, you know, I've been driving for 25 plus years, so I know I have, you know, a, a big no claims discount. I don't think it really discounts it that much, but that's how much I pay. Um, um, Wi-Fi. I pay £70 a month for Wi-Fi. Um, and I appreciate I am probably paying too much, but as I'm leaving soon, I'm not going to change it now. Um, I, I might get rid of it soon and put, I've got like a box with a SIM in it in my van. I might just use that for now, but, uh, uh, you know, I, there's no point me changing to a new provider now. Uh, my mobile phone, what I used to pay until recently, £95 a month, um, with EE, because um, they had me on one of these 24 month contracts with the new phone. But I got, as soon as the contract was up, I cancelled it. So I've still got the phone, which is a perfectly good phone. And I actually have an eSIM now, and that cost me 12, 12 pound a month. And I have, oh gosh, I can't remember. I have a lot of data on it. And I can make, um, I can even make up to 100 minutes of international calls on it. But it cost me 12 pound a month. And I've got more than enough data for what I need. Um, so that's a huge saving and so I do recommend anyone go to eSIMS. There's some better deals out there. It's also easier when you're traveling. Um, then, then we go on to medical. So, so in the UK, if you want if you're on prescriptions, it's I think the current cost is £9.65 per item now. So I have four I four or five items a month that's a lot so i do get um an annual certificate so i pay um uh, it works out 10 pound a month and that gets all my prescriptions because you know you don't get free prescriptions in the uk um unless there's some some exemptions but in the main you don't and um, you do get free health care um i don't uh you know, to go and see your doctor and have your regular checkups and that, and all that, that it's fine. But if you, I think everybody knows that if you need surgery or anything, the waiting list can be quite long here. And so sometimes you have to consider paying private. Now, thankfully, I've not needed any hospital treatment for a very long time. Um, I think I had an allergic reaction about five years ago and I was straight in at Warwick Hospital emergency and there was no problems there, emergency. I think we're pretty good um, but uh, yeah we're, we're, we are well known for having enormous waiting lists to have anything done. Uh, dentists, now dentists aren't uh, free in the UK um, even if you're on the NHS you still have to pay for it and I'm one of the lucky few I do have an NHS dentist um, but I still pay on average about £35 a month because and in that I'm like my checkups um, go to the hygienist, I'm not including if I have to have any major work, but that's, I would say on average, what it's costing me a month when I even it out. Um, opticians, probably £10 a month because I have to have an annual, well, I don't have to, but I have an annual eye test and I usually need to get one of my glasses replaced. So that average is about £10 a month. I do currently have life insurance and that costs me £60 a month. And I have travel insurance, which has cost me £40 a month. But um, although I have a good policy at the moment, it's not going to cover me when I go slow travelling and full-time travelling. So I'm looking around for other policies then, uh, which I know are probably going to cost me more. Um, but that's what I pay for travel insurance. And that covers me to be away for up to 90 days, which is uh, why it's probably a little bit higher than what other people may pay. Um, now we get to groceries. So I live on my own, so we're talking about groceries for one person. 
and um, I usually eat two meals a day, a big meal at lunchtime and then a salad in the evening. I'm not a big person for snacks and stuff in between um, and I don't buy processed foods. So, but my bill comes to £280 a month. Yikes, that's quite a lot, isn't it? And uh, I really don't know how families are for a coping. I really don't. And, you know, the prices have just shot up in the last few years. It's, it's been absolutely crazy. Um, but that's what it is. That's what I paid. Um, and entertainment. Uh, I, I, I don't go out so often, so I would say on average I have... Uh, one meal out with a friend a month and maybe one takeout. So say two and go to the cinema once a month or cinema or theatre. So I would budget about £80 a month for that. So that brings my total to £2,050 a month. And that's me living on the best budget that I can. Um, that, and I haven't included in there things like... Um, clothing because I'm trying not to buy things you know just because I like it so I'm trying not to just buy it now um, because I'm trying to be a minimalist trying but I would so on average I would say like buying things that you need like uh, maybe uh, like a new top or or something for your cameras or something for your home I'd say probably about 150 pounds a month I would budget for that um, and then I don't have uh, well, I used to have a Netflix subscription, but I don't have that at the moment. I shall get it for a month when there's something to watch. <clears throat> but I was just paying it and not using it. So I, I, I got rid of that a couple of months ago. I do have Prime at seven, seven pound a month. And um, I pay for Adobe uh, for 10 pound a month. And that's so I can edit my photos um, and stuff. But that's because I'm trying to do photography. And so I need a little bit of help. Um, so that's basically my cost. And now my other big cost has always been traveling. And because of the way I have been traveling, like going away, coming back, going on a tour, coming back and doing three or four trips a year, I'd say I was spending about, and um, with spending money, spending about £12,000 a year, um, which is quite a lot. When I go traveling, um, and another, this is another reason why I wanted to put this together was really so I can compare when I go traveling apples with apples. So we know how much I'm spending here and we can have an idea of whether it was cheaper to live somewhere else than it was in the UK. Um, so, so, you know, I haven't included travel in my budget because I won't be traveling. I'll already be traveling while I'm living. Um, so I won't have to spend that money each year. It will kind of be combined. Um, and so I'm going to go on the budget of 2050 as a base budget a month with maybe a contingency of 150 for bits and bobs and see how I can compare it when I get going. But I also hope that's useful for people that are thinking of coming here to get an idea of how much things will cost, like your, your gas and your groceries and you know, if you want to eat out. But do remember, I'm a single person. If you're a couple, you need to double all that up. I don't think the UK is particularly cheap anymore. I really don't know how some people manage it. But thank you for watching. See you soon.